Hello, this is a follow up on my video on gamma correction and the sRGB color space. And uh, I will go into more detail into how to do a proper conversion between linear and sRGB. Uh, so if you remember um, in the last video, when I was doing those conversions, say I have my um, sRGB color here and I want to convert that to linear space. I was just uh, applying some simple power curve uh, with uh, a gamma equal to 2.2. And conversely, when I was doing the reverse conversion, so from linear space uh, to sRGB, I was just uh, using the reciprocal with gamma equal uh, 0, 45, 45. So this is not the actual uh, proper way of doing the, um, the sRGB conversions. Um, when they uh, specified the sRGB color space, they wanted to avoid what we have here, which is like an infinite slope um, at 0 when uh, applying like a simple power curve. And so they made it so that you actually close to zero, uh, you have a linear relation between um, uh, RGB and sRGB, and then you catch up with, uh, with a power curve. So the actual uh, formula to, um, to go from uh, sRGB to linear uh, has to consider uh, two cases, one where you are uh, below some threshold and the relation is just linear, and above some threshold you apply some uh, power curve. Um, and if you want to go uh, in the, the reverse direction, you have to consider a different th threshold and just uh, invert the, uh, this equation. So, um, the, um, the simple approximation um, seemed to be uh, good enough, but uh, some people pointed out to me that you can actually see the difference in the, um, in the very dark tones. And so I thought it would be interesting to do this follow-up video where um, I'm going to uh, try to visualize uh, this difference and try to see if I can, if I can see like um, the distortion that happens in the dark tones. And we will try to, um, to set the correct uh, conversion in the Orca renderer. So uh, the first thing I want to do is actually plot the two, um, the two curves uh, to see how, how much they differ. So let's um, create some uh, Python script here that I will call gamma. And so I want to plot the two curves, so I will import uh, NumPy to do my computations and um, matplotlib to plot things um, from matplotlib uh, import pyplots. And um, so let's say I will go from uh, gamma to linear, from sRGB to linear. So I will um, create myself a linear space here, going from 0 to 1 with, uh, let's say, I will have 255 uh, steps. And I will have um, my approximation which is equal to uh, sRGB to the power uh, 2.2. And I will have the proper way to do it. So, um, so this is a piecewise um, function. So we 
input domain is srgb uh, and we have to uh, we have two conditions so let me check um, that piecewise function so you have x you have a, a list of conditions um, and a list of functions that get applied depending on the conditions and so we can do uh, that. Um, so if srgb is inferior to this threshold, so for And then I have my list of functions. So in this case, we just divide by 1292. And in this case, we add uh, 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 we divide by one. And we raise that. To the power. Uh, well. of 2.4. Uh, so now I can plot these. So I will plot my linear. Um, like the proper curve. With the color green for example, and I will plot the approximation. Uh, so we don't have power, we have power. Okay, so we can see the two curves and we can actually see that in some uh, places they, they differ quite a bit. So what I want to do is um, I want to plot like the difference and see how it evolves um, as a function of like my sRGB scale here. So what I will do is that I will take the error between those, uh, so linear minus linear approx, and I guess I, I, I take the, um, the square of that, Um, and then I will plot that on a second axis. Um, so I guess I have to do something like this. Um, get me some figure, get the axis. Uh, I'll actually plot on this axis and I can get a secondary axis for the error, uh, which would be axis twin x. And on this one, I will plot um, my error. And I will show that. Okay, so we actually see that there are like 
two two kind of lobes here where our error is uh, is actually quite large and and remember so we don't we don't perceive uh, uh, differences the same way uh, in the dark tones and in the lighter tones so um, like the approximation might might actually be good enough here because the error is like a small difference in the in the very light uh, grays and whites um, won't necessarily be perceivable, but it might be possible that the error here is noticeable. Um, so we might want to just uh, display some some colors in this region um, and see what the what the error looks like. So what I will do is that I will uh, print some colors um, in our test application in Orca. And the thing is, uh, we already set up some uh, gamma encoding uh, in the last part of the pipeline. But, um, and I can't really change that um, per draw call, so I wouldn't necessarily be able to um, compare uh, the effect of different curves side by side, but I do want to have them side by side just, uh, uh, just so that we can like visually see the errors um, and like, doing it one after the other, we might not be able to compare anything because the errors uh, would be small. So uh, <clears throat> what I'm going to do is that, um, so here's my uh, how my render is set up. I have some colors. Um, my shader is doing everything in linear space. And as a last step, I convert um, to uh, sRGB, but using like the simple approximation. And I bleed that to my frame buffer. So, so essentially, like the approximation is already computed there. And I want to compare that side by side with a uh, more proper um, uh, with a more proper conversion. So what I'm going to do is that I will uh, encode my value into sRGB, and I will um, I will apply a reverse gamma to it, and I will smuggle that through my shader as if it was like a linear value. Then uh, the last step will apply a gamma, which uh, obviously will uh, cancel out. And so I should be writing the, the correct sRGB value to my frame buffer. And I can compare that with something where I just write the linear color um, in the normal way. And this way I can compare um, the effects of different conversions uh, side by side. So um, <clears throat> let's do this. Um, let's close this, go um, to OrCam. And let's go, let's rebuild everything to make sure. And let's go to our color space uh, test. Okay, so if I'm going uh, down here, I will uh, I will write the first uh, maybe like the first 16 shades of uh, black and dark gray so 
so my linear value will be uh, i over 256. And then I will first have my normal, um, like my approximation, which will use this color directly. And I will draw a rectangle um, at x will be equal, um, let's see, 300. And I will draw 30 by 30 squares. So um, now I will convert that value to sRGB uh, using the proper approximation. So uh, let's say we have s to be equal to. Um, so now I'm I'm converting from linear to sRGB. So um, I'm using that uh, that threshold. So let's say it will, will be L times uh, 1292. And if um, L is or, or equal to our threshold, we actually use um, our power function. Um, so it will be S equal power F. Uh, so basically this thing. Um, okay, and now um, I will apply <clears throat> the reverse uh, gamma correction to that value so that it will cancel out with the last uh, part of the pipeline. So essentially I'm doing O F uh, of S, uh, S at power of uh, 2.2. So I'm using uh, that to set the color as if it was a linear color. And I'm drawing a rectangle just below uh, my test ones. So um, oops, should increment the x here. So um, times 30 um, here and 30 by 30. So what do we have here? Um, doesn't look really really correct Ooh, that should be so different um, so if I'm doing the correct, the correct conversion. So if it's, mm, yeah, okay. So if it's more than the threshold, um, let's see. So that looks more uh, like <clears throat> like it should. And so I don't know how the how it will look on the video in YouTube and on your. Um, screen but there is a noticeable difference in the in the dark tones here and the um, the bottom one is noticeably darker in the dark tones and then they kind of match um, they are almost undistinguishable here um, which is uh, which is interesting because the error should be greater here if we if we go back to our um, 
our Python thing here. So um, here, if I just do that again. So the error should be greater um, when I'm printing the beginning of the range. It should be greater at the end of my range. But remember that we don't perceive differences um, in brightness equally. Um, and maybe um, it's just that I'm perceiving uh, the differences in shades more accurately in this range. There's also the fact that my screen might not be totally well calibrated, so take this with a grain of salt, but I'm actually seeing the more uh, obvious differences in this region uh, rather than in that region. And so the top one is, um, the bottom one is, is darker. It's very notice noticeable on the second and third squares. Uh, and the second one is the um, correct um, conversion, which seems like it should be the opposite, right? Because if you go back here, um, the green curve is the correct um, is the correct inversion, and the magenta curve is the um, approximation. So it seems like the green curve should be lighter, and I'm rendering the so the linear one, which is using the approximation we have in the final shader, is the first one, and the um, and the correct conversion is the second one. So that doesn't seem to make a whole lot of sense. Oh, but why? Um, so yeah, um, this um, this figure is for going from sRGB um, in the x x axis. Uh, to linear. So actually what I'm doing here is going from linear in encoding to sRGB. And so um, so when I take some color in linear space here, I should look at the curve and look where I land on the x-axis. And, and if I do that, the, the green curve gives me a lower value than the magenta curve. And then when it gets decoded, um, the, the green curve should actually look darker. And that's, uh, and that's what happens. So, so that's interesting. I, I didn't expect that the difference to be so obvious. You don't have to squint at that very hard to see the difference, uh, like even from a distance. Um, you know that there's something going on here. So it might be actually worth it to do the correct version um, in the shaders and everywhere. Um, shouldn't cost too much. Um, basically, it's just add some like a branch at the very end. So um, so let's do the correct one. Uh, so so okay. So now I'm going to go in um, my platform layer, go to graphics stuff, um, and uh, I guess graphics com dot seam. And let's see how I set the color. Um, so here I'm setting the color with cross. Uh, yeah, so I'm actually encoding the color in the web GPU implementation. Uh, when I'm encoding, well, 
encode path. Um, I'm doing that here. So here, if I receive an sRGB color, I decode it. Uh, and so here, I'm going to do the, the real uh, conversion. So let's take that out. And if C uh, inferior or equal, so here we, we are going from uh, sRGB to linear. So if C uh, is inferior or equal to that guy, uh, 40, 45, we have um, C equal uh, C over 1292. Otherwise, we have C equal the so this thing uh, C plus O O fifty five um, over one O fifty five to the power of two dot four. And that is the thing that I set as my component. So now I have to go uh, update my shader. Um, and the final bit one. So here I'm doing the approximation um, with a simple power curve. And I want to do the piecewise one, so I have to um, have a way to conditionally store things um, into that vector. So let's go to this. Uh, functions so maybe that would be mix something um, but so I could mix based on the threshold but there, sh there should be something that just allows me to um, to choose which one I want based on based on a threshold uh, so let's see. The B one ties the cast logic built in. Oh, and so might be select. Uh, so it takes a um, uh, so yeah, so it is value if false, value if true, and your condition, and um, and it's bro broadcasted um, on vectors. So that might be uh, what we need. So select, and my condition is uh, if my color is less than, so this is back for, um, so I don't want to actually select on the, on the last component. So um, I will select just on the color channels. And the approximation should be. So this time we are going from linear to sRGB uh, from. Yeah, from linear to sRGB, we are uh, doing uh, this one. So. Um, if I'm inferior to that guy or equal. So if this is uh, true, I just use the simple uh, approximation, the simple uh, linear relation. 
1292. And otherwise, uh, I'm using the, this one. Um, so this would be power of color RGB over um, vector F. So let gamma equal one over four. Okay, so and our condition is here. And so um, let's see, let RGB equal that. And my color will be a vector of RGB. Um, one. Uh, having some doubts here because, yeah. From here to here, okay. Uh, so let's build that. Um, and then, of course, I want to. to test that one, so um, so I guess the first one is now the correct one because we're passing the linear value and it will get correctly uh, transformed at the end of the pipeline and the second one if we want to, to get a comparison. Um, we can just say that we encode that with our approximation. Um, And then we can, um, or we might just want to encode, um, we might just want to use the, the, correct, um, the correct encoding here. Um, and then pass that as an sRGBA color. And normally, our uh, renderer will uh, correctly decode that color to linear and then re encode it the correct way with uh, um, the final transform at the end of the pipeline. So the two, um, the two colors, the, the two gradients should look uh, identical now. Um, 
Oh, so should I should uh, rebuild everything? Okay. Uh, so we got an error here. Um, expected uh, for function call. So I guess it's unbalanced parenthesis. So, uh, should be more correct. So now we have, uh, of course, VEC3 here, VEC3 here. Uh, there might be a um, more like a nicer way to to do that, but whatever. Uh, that's interesting. Uh, what happened here? Um. So I suddenly lost my background color. Does that make any sense? Uh, what? What did just happen? Um, very strange. Okay, so I just spared you like 30 minutes of very stupid debugging just to realize that I was setting this guy to one and it should of course be, uh, it should preserve the alpha channel of the color. Um, so let's rebuild that. And uh, so we have our background is back and we now can't distinguish the shades uh, between the top and bottom row. So that seems to be good. Um, so that's it for uh, this follow up on sRGB conversions, uh, we now have like a correct conversion um, that is like not the, the simple approximation. Um, so next video, uh, as I was uh, saying in the, in the last one, uh, I will probably talk about uh, HSV and uh, HSL and maybe do some color picker uh, widgets for the UI of Oracle. See you then.